Welcome back. Let's talk about average total cost. So total cost is the sum of fixed cost plus variable cost, right? It's just the total cost of a firm. And average total cost is just that total cost divided by quantity. So it's the average fixed cost, so the fixed cost like rent spread across the quantity of output, plus the average variable cost, the cost of these variable inputs, labor, supplies, etc. So the total of that divided by quantity gives us our average variable cost. So not surprisingly, average total cost is just the sum of average fixed cost plus average variable cost. So what does this look like when we graph it out? Average total cost turns out to be a U-shaped function. You know, like what? How do we get there? So let's put a quick note up here. This is where we're going, right? Let's give our punchline away. So this average total cost is a U-shaped curve. That's our punchline. That's where we're going. How the heck do we end up with this U-shaped curve, though? Well, let's take a look at it and see if we can make sense of it. So before we get the average total cost, what we really want to do is we want to think about average fixed cost and average variable cost, and then when we put them together, we get our average total cost. So if we just set up a graph, and on our vertical axis, we can call this average total cost, uh, average fixed cost, and average variable cost, but importantly, we're going to think about this in terms of dollars. And we're comparing that versus units of output or quantity. All right, so let's do the least interesting one first, and the one that's easiest for us to wrap our head around. What does average fixed cost look like? So if the firm produces one unit of output, right, one unit of output, that means all of their rent, all of their fixed cost, is assigned to this one unit. So that's going to be really high. If they produce two units of output, what happens? Well, now this same amount they were paying for rent gets spread across two units, so that average fixed cost gets split in half. Well, what about three units? What about four units? Five units, etc. So average fixed cost, as that rent is spread across more and more units of output, decreases and approaches zero, right? So this is the firm's average fixed cost, or AFC for short. All right, so that's one piece of it. If we want to eventually know what does this average total cost look like, We've thought about average fixed cost. What does average variable cost look like? So if we make the assumption of diminishing marginal product, so we've got just an upward sloping marginal cost curve, and if all that sounds like jargon, that's fine. Ignore the last 30 seconds. Average variable cost increases as output increases, right? So it's a line that's just increasing as we produce more. Each additional unit is more expensive to produce, so that's an increase in marginal cost. Well, if each next unit is more expensive in terms of supplies and labor, then that's gonna pull up the average. So this is our average variable cost, right? So average variable cost, or AVC. So this is, we should probably put a little note next to this, right? I kind of ran through this story, but what is it? It's increasing with uh, increases in units. So ABC increases with increasing units of output. But what happened to average fixed costs? Wait, it's, it's going the other way. Right, so average fixed costs, so AFC, decreases with increases in the number of units produced. 
So think about our story for just a second. We said that our total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost. And our average total cost is the average fixed cost plus the average variable cost. So what happens the average total cost as the number of units increases? We have these sort of opposing forces, right? So as the number of units increases, the average fixed cost is decreasing. But the average variable cost is increasing. So they're going in opposite directions of each other. So what does this end up looking like? Well, let's see if we can just sort of add these two together and come up with an average total cost curve. So what is our total cost if we only produce one unit or if the firm produces one unit, right? It's their fixed cost plus their variable cost. So we take our fixed cost, and we add in whatever this variable cost is, right? So I'm adding this, this little gap, this amount for our variable cost for one unit. I'm just adding it in. So that must be then the average total cost for the first unit. All right, for the second unit, what's happened? Well, average fixed cost has decreased. So now average fixed cost is that point, but we've got this variable cost. So our average fixed cost is this point, but we've got to add that variable cost to it, right? Because it's average fixed cost plus average variable cost. So where do we end up? We take that and we add it. So we end up something like that. All right, what about our third unit? Okay, so we're somewhere down there for our average fixed cost, but our average variable cost has increased. So I take the average fixed cost and I add to it that average variable cost, and it's something like that. We could do it again for the fourth one, right? So, okay, where's our fourth one? Here's our average fixed cost, sort of mark the point. And what's our average variable cost? So the cost of labor and supplies, etc. So I've got to take that cost of labor, supplies, etc. And I add it to that average fixed cost. Ooh. Wait, it looks like now average total cost is increasing. Let's do one more. All right, what if they produce five units? So if we take rent, we spread it across five units. Now the rent per unit is pretty small, right? Our average fixed cost is pretty small, but our average variable cost is increasing. So what's our average variable cost? The cost of labor and supplies. Well, now, now it's this much bigger average cost. So, okay, I take that and I add it to my average fixed cost and we end up maybe something like that. So if we were to connect these together, what does this look like? So we see in the early phase that our average total cost is decreasing, but it eventually bottoms out and starts increasing, right? So this is our average, oops, not average fixed cost. Sorry, this is our average total cost. Let's get our notation right on this thing. This is our average total cost. And what is average total cost? Again, we said it's our average fixed cost plus that average variable cost. So we're essentially just taking both of our curves that we drew in a minute ago. We're just adding them together and saying, where do we end up? So how do we have this decrease and then an increase? How did we get this sort of U-shaped curve? Well, if we think about the early parts, what's happening? Well, our average fixed cost is decreasing, right? Our average fixed cost is decreasing as we produce more. And our average variable cost is increasing. So the question is, which one wins out? Well, at really low quantities, uh, adding another unit and spreading out that fixed cost means that we get really large decreases in average fixed cost. So the decrease in average fixed cost outweighs this increasing average variable cost. So that means that overall what's happening to our total cost is we're producing more. That means that our average total cost is decreasing. 
But what about as the number of units increase? Right, what about over here? So average fixed cost is still declining. So we still have a decline in average fixed cost as we spread rent across more units. And average variable cost is still increasing. So which one wins out? Well, as we produce more and more units, the additional unit doesn't change that average of the fixed cost very much. Think about this with like your GPA, for example. If you're in your second semester, an A or an F changes your GPA a lot. But by the time you get to your last semester, it doesn't matter nearly as much. Why? Because your GPA is spread out across a really large quantity. It's the same thing when we're talking about, say, spreading rent out across units of output. If you go from one unit to two units, now all of a sudden that amount of rent that's allocated to each unit gets cut in half. But if you go from a million units to a million and one units, it doesn't really have much effect at all. So over here, as the output has increased, as we're producing more units, now this increase in average variable cost outweighs the decrease in spreading these fixed costs across more output. So what does that mean? That means that our average total cost is increasing. That's this uh, uh, right-hand side of the average total cost curve. So I understand it's a lot for sure. What I would encourage you to do is stop, go back, watch this again, go through it slowly, and think at every step, do I understand where the average fixed cost comes from, where the average variable cost comes from, and when I add them together, why do I see this U-shape in the average total cost? I think you'll get there with a little bit of time and thought, but it's certainly not something you're going to be able to just memorize your way through. I'd encourage you to think your way through it. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.